Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben Yu here for another historic video. Um, this is going to be the last of these series, or well, more correctly, this is going to be the last of these that I'm recording today, uh, while I sort of have the all access thing of the FNM event. So for this last one, I wanted to do something silly and fun, and I think spinning the wheels with Etherworks Marvel falls into that category. So if you're not familiar with this one from Days of Standard Past, Whenever a permanent you control is put into your graveyard, you get an energy. That part's not as important. The second part is important. You can pay six energy to look at the top six cards of your library and cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cost. Well, what big dumb things do we have in this format, you might ask? Well, I don't know. An Olamog? The backside of this land, which can also find Olamog? You are best the sea god for kraken-related goodness, or maybe just, uh, you know, just an Ugin. Um, so these are powerful things that you can be doing, but in order to get to this energy, you have to be playing some less impressive cards in your deck. Um, so we have Ether Hub, Glimmer of Genius, Rogue Refiner, Harness Lightning, Servant of the Conduit, and Attune with Ether to make the wheels sort of spin on this deck and the kind of fair glue that holds everything together and buys you time to gather enough energy or find your Aetherworks Marvel is Uro. Which, surprise, surprise, that card goes in a blue-green deck. Shocker, I know. If you've been enjoying the historic content this week and you want to see more of it in the future, please go ahead and take a moment here to like this video. Support means a lot. It helps the YouTube algorithm find my stuff and, you know... If the historic videos did good in this week, and I think I ended up making seven of them, one for each day of the week, then I will consider making more historic content in the future. Let's battle, though. I go first. I don't have an Aetherworks Marvel. I have a medium hand that needs a lot. I think I'm just going to go ahead and mulligan and try to find something a little bit better. And I don't know that this is it. I think on six, I probably just go ahead and keep this. But man, it feels like I'm playing a limited deck if I keep this hand with like Harness Lightning Rogue Refiner. Now let's go to five. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, um, I have a sneaking suspicion that I'm going to lose this game. I get a few turns, but I am uh, very much not on track to win, and I might have to blow both of my energy to cast this Rogue Refiner, as I have Mountain. Okay, well, that means I only have to blow one energy. Alright, so I can Glimmer of Genius next turn, hopefully find something good. But if my opponent can cast a big scary thing, I am just done for. A uh, Glimmer is an instant. I was about 90% sure. But, you know, it's free to check. That's obviously very good. It's going to create two very large constructs in a row. Or not. You can have the Hedron Archive, I guess. Looking for something much scarier than those things. Hey, oh, we can uh, we can maybe work with this. All right, so I need to put this in play. 
And I also need to generate one more energy. I think I can do both of those things right now. Seven energy. All right, so I can Aetherworks Marvel. And I guess I wait till my opponent's end step to do that. I don't know that it's going to be worth my energy to try to finish this off. It seems like I'm going to lose to bigger problems than this if I'm going to lose... I don't think I had counter spells. What was lost is now returned. Thank you. Thank you for the voiceover, Karn. At some point in the not too distant future, my opponent is going to start cashing in these cards over here that you can probably barely see on your screen or cards that are relatively powerful. I thought I could also proliferate their planeswalkers. That's kind of cool. Are the seeds of Truth lies beyond. Yeah. So, I need to respond to that. All right, what do we got? Eh. I feel like their deck did cooler things than my deck did. You will not threaten this world. They might just get something like a Sorcerer Spyglass and shut off my Planeswalker. At which point their, their three Planeswalkers can just ruin me. Yeah, Meteor Golem, totally fair. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yo. All right. This is actually, like, surprisingly good. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I see. It's showing me the reduced cost based on that. Okay, I shouldn't have paid that life then. Uh, shoot. Also, my opponent's permanents aren't colors. Secrets manifest before you. I can't. I can't deal with it. Oh god, this only targets creatures, not any target. Oh, that's no good. Alright, uh, default plan, cast Uro, when I don't know what to do. Hmm, I maybe should have paid life for Glimmer of Genius. I kill this. Now this can kill that planeswalker at least. Baby, baby heart attack where there where I uh, almost missed Guardian Idol. There it is, in case you missed it. I know the uh, text is... You can have this. I know the text is very, very clear on these small permanents. This is why I didn't try out like a Paradox Engine deck even though I wanted to. So 
a Golos. Normally I'd be getting something like this. What does it get? Ah, they're going to pick up the Cascading Cataracts. Meteor Golem kills this. And now I'm pretty far away from just casting the Olamog. I can get an Uro into play, but that just doesn't seem like it's going to be good enough. I think I'm going to take a draw step and then feed. I've, uh, I've been outvalued, folks. Um... I mean, that does stuff. I don't think it does enough stuff, but I'll make it. I, I don't think it's enough. Hmm. Crawling Barons also can get um, pretty stupid big. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 damage I can represent. Not enough. Your patience is rewarded. My opponent also gets a new Karn. We'll see what sort of uh, cards they have. I can create mm. or destroy. Let us begin. Stand How bad is it? Damage report? Oh, it's bad. <laughs> All right, I think I think here I'm comfortable with saying that we're going to lose this one to the inevitability that our opponent has. They're they're going off. Plus, you know, I got a limited number of matches here, and I'd like to do the thing a couple of times. We kind of Well, I won't say that we missed with either works Marvel this time because like we got a planeswalker. And a relatively good one at that, but it wasn't enough. Not against that deck. Alright, um, this hand is fine. I don't really have anything to do on turn two. I have an attune with Aether that gets me my third land, that lets me play Rogue Refiner, that lets me curve out into Aether Works Barbel. Alright, what is that? Triumph. Um, so I do have blue, green, and red mana. I guess I'll pick up another forest here. I guess not having a turn two play isn't the end of the world. That means I can just put in my shock land tapped. Yeah, maybe I'm good with that after all. JK, I have a play. Alright, so our opponent is probably playing either a bug or four color control deck featuring things like Uro, kind of like what I played with Manguchi's list. I think that was yesterday for you all. And now our Etherworks Marvel is gone. So, not great for me. If opponent is playing that now, they might have like another thought seize effect that they're trying to hit. Alright. 
I'm paying the two life here. Since I don't have an Aetherworks Marvel immediately, I could just play the Uro. But this represents more immediate power on board and also starts fishing me towards another card. So I think I'm fine with that. Um, I don't have a lot of manipulation in this deck in terms of dig. Like, Glimmer of Genius is about as good as it's going to get. And I don't think I have enough cards in Graveyard yet where it makes sense to just start going to town with Uro. Uro might be what's happening this turn, though. I'm going to start here and plan out my turn. I think I'm attacking with both my creatures, but there are worlds where I end up using Servant of Conduit for mana. Do I want that back? I probably want that back. How are they doing on cards in Graveyard? Alright, they're pretty close to Uro. I have a bomb in hand. Okay, this is just a new Uro going to Graveyard. So now next turn, they can get their Uro back via Escape. There goes my bomb, in all likelihood. So it seems to me like an 8-8 X-proof token is something that's terrifying. So like, this was easy for me, but maybe they're too scared of Marvel. Uh, maybe not too scared, appropriately scared. Yeah, you know what, we'll put it onto the battlefield. Now there's five cards in Graveyard, but one of them is the Uro. So I need another card in Graveyard. I can also just Harness Lightning their Uro away if they play one. And I can do that while also casting my own Uro. Which, in fact, would be quite good for me. Something to start to think of. <laughs> That's, like, surprisingly good here. Alright, uh, you have two mana available. Let's go. So, I can activate now and then spike Olamog, which can hit lands. But I think I don't want to give them the preparation time. Um, this is just an instance where I don't have enough information to truly know what line is right. But I like the idea that they tap out on their turn, try to put their Uro in play, and then I eat that with an Olamog instead. I guess with, like, the Planeswalkers, better to activate on my turn. So that's two hits. Two of the Ugins make it better to activate on my turn.
All right, here we go. Oh, baby. We did it. Um, so let's, yeah. There we go. That's what I thought. How's the old daily win counter coming from recording these videos? Probably pretty well. I think I need one more win to max everything out. Let's see. Let's see how consistently we do the thing. One and one currently. And it seems like this deck doesn't mulligan super well. I need to know what... Okay. Do I keep this? Deck's good. You heard it here first. Oh, a Sprite Dragon. A Legacy All-Star right there. Pretty good in Vintage, too. Uh... Awkward. I need another land. Very badly. And then also probably another land beyond that. Like, this gets me a land. Then I'm, like, short on energy... These things don't really do... I don't know if I'm supposed to keep this. I don't know why Lotus Field is here. Uh. This one feels sketchy, but I have the ability to produce 6 energy and an Aetherworks Marvel. Let's just see if I die along the way. Harness Lightning can kill a Pelt Collector, but if I kill that... Never mind, I can kill that. I can also just kill Lana War Elves. I just want to pay one energy to kill something. And then try to keep six energy for an Aetherworks Marvel on curve, assuming I can hit my next land drop and then get a land drop beyond that. I, maybe I'm supposed to kill the Llanowar Elves, but I'm more afraid of my life total than I am the cards that they're going to cast. I can hopefully go over the cards my opponent is going to cast. So the good news is I can hit a land drop. Bad news is my opponent has a lot of power in play. That is just forest. So we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total potential energy. I can stay at the same energy total and just kill this. Play Rogue Refiner and then Aetherworks Marvel the following turn. I think I'm good with that. I could just kill the Llanowar Elves on this turn, leave myself with 6 energy, and then if I spike a land off the top, I just play Aetherworks Marvel and go to town. But that results in me taking 2 damage. 2 more damage at minimum. Alright, I've hit the land drop. That's good. I trade this with Bone Crusher this turn, take three ish damage, and then hopefully get there. Okay, we can take seven instead. What's half my life total between friends? 
All right, you have one job, Etherworks Marvel. One job. And I'm gonna do it now in case I hit the Planeswalker. Um, I guess I hit this and go for another shot at Guggen. Vent Olamog. So, the good news is I have two energy towards trying again. The bad news is I spent six energy and four mana to make a 5-5. Five five. Not, uh, not ideal. I mean, I need to draw something this turn. I did not draw something. I am not technically dead on board, but I think I'm dead. Alright, you know what? Let's get one more match in here and try to do the thing again, rather than uh, just kind of wait here for a minute while my opponent uh, finishes up this one. I'd like to, I'd like to end things on a higher note than that. Let's spin the wheel or, like, die spectacularly. Either way, I'm good with it. While we're waiting here... Uh, if you're enjoying this content, please consider hitting the like button. It helps other people find my content. That whole YouTube algorithm thing is a big deal for content creators. If it wasn't, we'd shut up about it. Trust me, I hate it. Um, this hand doesn't really do anything. It plays an Uro and ramps towards Urn Timber Symbiosis, I guess, if I end up treating that like a spell. Eh? Let's mulligan. And is worse. Like, very noticeably worse. And this hand is unplayable. Alright. One more last game. I would like to do the thing. This deck feels pretty weak. Uh, it feels kind of glass cannony, and in addition to just being a glass cannon, it's not like it's hyper consistent, which I don't love. Like, you're really relying on Aetherworks Marvel to get a fast kill, and your interaction is subpar compared to a lot of the other interaction of the format, I think. So, like, this is not quite an on-rate card for this format. The next turn I can play another Servant of the Conduit or a Rogue Refiner. I'm going to try not to use the Servant of the Conduits for mana. Alright, so I need to play Aetherworks Marvel, and then I need to play a Servant of the Conduit in some order. I probably want to play the Servant of the Conduit first, especially if I don't draw a land. Oh, my opponent has Shocked. I will also shock. I think I... So let's assume their life total doesn't really matter. Let's play the Aetherworks Marvel pre-combat, and then I play around, like, a sensor-type card by having Servant of the Conduit up. It means if they have a kill spell that costs two mana, they can just do it now. But it allows me to play around a card that's in the format and is common. Am 
opponent doesn't have very many cards in graveyard. I don't need to worry about that coming back immediately. I can cast Servant of the Conduit and try to just do the thing. I don't know that you need to play that shock untapped there until after you have the information from Growth Spiral. Oh, that's actually really good. That means that if this first one gets countered or something, I just have another. Do the thing now, do the thing later. It might just be do the thing later. So there's the Planeswalker to think about for why I should do it now. But eating their Uro is pretty neat. I guess right now they also, like, have no possible counter spells up. And for Turn Timber Symbiosis, there's the card that can get rid of the green stuff. Alright, let's fire off now. Yeah, see... That's how I wanted to end this video. Just good old land destruction. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if the historic videos did well this week, I will be making more of them in the future. Have a great rest of the day.